sponsored by Squarespace. These are my tips for staying at a Japanese ryokan with kids. So this is the first time we're traveling outside of Tokyo and staying at a Japanese ryokan with my one-year-old baby boy. Since it is going to be our first time, we're probably going to learn a lot of stuff along the way. So I want to make this video and share all of the tips and tricks that we learned in this trip and share it with all of you so that when you come to Japan, you'll have all of it in your back pocket. But before we start, like always, if you want to see what I'm doing on the daily, check out my Instagram account. If you want to help support the channel, check out the Tokyo merch. And if you guys have any questions about Japan or your Japan travels, then check out my Discord community. That said, we're going to be doing this video vlog style, so let's start from the beginning. So here we go, we booked a ryokan in Atami for two nights with Wolfie who's just a few days shy of 15 months. Atami is only a one hour away by Shinkansen bullet train, so it seemed like a perfect spot for a first time overnight beach destination. Wolfie, how's it your first time on the Shinkansen? It's your first time, dude. So we're just eating right now. It's crazy because there's just not a lot of people on the train. I guess, yeah, not a lot of people are traveling. But it's nice, we're trying to eat so we don't have to eat so much when we get there and then also feeding Wolfie at the same time. So we get to enjoy hopefully some of the beach. Unfortunately, it looks like it started raining a little bit, but maybe it's just a passing shower. Here's the first tip. Shinkansen luggage travel, which will apply to many people traveling to Oryokon. This one is a new regulation that started last May, so it's fair to mention that passengers with oversized luggage larger than 160 centimeters are required to reserve a storage space. Previously, the storage space between the front and rear seats in each cart were free to use, but now passengers who reserve these seats are allocated the storage space. At the same time, the overhead storage compartment designed for smaller baggage and strollers can be used by anyone. Sorry, Wolfie, it rained a little bit. As soon as it stops, we're gonna go to the hotel and we're gonna change and you're gonna go to the beach. <laughs> Luckily, the rain stopped for a while, so we walked quickly to the hotel, which was like 10 minutes away. <laughs> Maybe we can go up here. Uh, yeah, well, let's just see. Yeah, I can I think by the beach, there's like a family restaurant and like there's stuff you can just you think so? Yeah. Okay, so. We were planning on coming here a little bit early so that we can go experience the beach, but it's raining right now. It's really raining. Oh my god! <laughs> and since we came here early, then we can't go inside the hotel, so we're just kind of like stuck in the lobby for right now. But see, it's it's weird because it's stopped now, so it's like it rains for like a few minutes, then it stops, then it rains for a few minutes, and it stops. Hey, good job, Wolfie. You need to take. What do you think, dude? <laughs> We still had an hour until check-in, but the staff were kind enough to prepare the room a little bit early so we could check in. Kind of a rare case, so don't expect it, but having a baby might have helped. You got a special chair. So cute. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Look, you got a chair. <laughs> hey, give me time. Yeah. <laughs> Tip two. Check kid and baby amenities with the hotel in advance. Some ryokons are super kid friendly and well, some are not. So you really should check in advance what they offer to minimize any misunderstandings as well as to help lessen your baggage load. In our case, we did research to find a kid friendly ryokon and followed up with a call to see what other kid services they offered. They were able to set up a futon for Wolfie to nap before we arrived so he could sleep whenever he needed. This ryokon also set up a microwave inside of the room for the baby food as well as organized a cute little baby chair, diaper disposal, and baby bag. 
staff. Oh, they even offered rice for Wolfie at his 5 p.m. dinner time before our in-room dinner time at 7. We brought instant baby bento boxes, but we wanted to feed him as much natural food as possible, so this extra service was appreciated. And I think Wolfie loved it too. You're so hungry. <laughs> Tip 3. Onsen bath. Since Wolfie still rocks a diaper and some onsen facilities don't allow babies who wear diapers into the onsen, we decided to reserve a room with its own private onsen bath. I should also mention though that there are strong onsens with a lot of sulfur or have a strong acidity, and these onsens are not recommended for babies, so you might want to check the type of onsen before finalizing your ryokan stay. Are you brushing your teeth, Wolfie? No, you're supposed to sit, Tip right? 4. Getting an extra room. This tip really depends on the family, but having an extra room really made a difference in our case. Since Wolfie is still not the best sleeper and will get fussed with a lot of noise and movement, having the extra room gave us some mommy and daddy time during his midday nap. And it was clutched during our in-room dinner, allowing us to enjoy the meal without waking him. Tip 5. In-room dining. If you're staying at a yokan with a child, I highly recommend also booking in-room dining if they offer it. It makes life so much easier when the staff bring and prepare the food for you without having to go and search for dinner. You can enjoy an amazing Japanese-style kaiseki dinner while the kid sleeps. Just keep in mind that the in-room dining option really depends on the ryokan, as some may offer only in-hotel restaurant dining, while others offer both. So again, check before booking. Oh, and you should be aware that the staff come a bit early to the room to prepare the meal. So in our case, our dinner was scheduled at 7 p.m., so we aim to get Wolfie to bed by 6.45. <laughs> So before I continue on, I want to give a quick shout out to our sponsor for this video, it's Squarespace. If you don't already know, Squarespace is the number one way to build your online presence. Here are just some of the reasons why we love using Squarespace so much. Whether you're starting your passion project or building a business, Squarespace has all the tools to get it done while also looking ultra sleek and professional at the same time. They support numerous portfolios and gallery designs, which you can customize and even password protect so the right people see your work. Use its fully integrated blogging tools and commenting features such as threaded comments, replies and likes to help engage your community. And my favorite, built-in analytics to see how your visits, unique visitors, and page views trend over time. So go to squarespace.com today for your free trial and when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com forward slash paolo from Tokyo and get 10% off your first domain or website. All right, let's continue on. All right, so we finally got him to sleep. Today was probably one of the toughest times you've ever had to try to like put him to sleep. I don't know what it is. Maybe it's because we kind of missed his middle nap his like afternoon nap because we were traveling. We've never had him cry so much and just like not go to sleep. So it's it pretty tough. Even when he went to sleep, he was like still like breathing, like he was crying. So this is like quite tough. Luckily, one of the things is we brought a camera. We brought a baby camera with us. So he's in the other room right now. We're watching him and we can kind of have dinner at the same time. So it makes it very useful. Tip 6. Bring a baby monitor. This one just gave us a peace of mind and may not apply to a lot of families. But since Wolfie is still one and we had an extra room, having a baby camera was super useful for us. As mentioned, Wolfie slept on the floor futon without guardrail so he could easily wake up and get into all of the various room knickknacks, furniture, etc. So it helped us better enjoy our time in the other room knowing that our little one was safe asleep in the other room. And in case you're interested, I'll leave the link to the one we have in the description. Yeah, did you put the cap? Oh, thank you. Dad forgot to put the cap on. Thank you, dude. And these days, I take over in the morning and let Michael sleep in, since she's the one that gets up at night if Wolfie gets fussy. Good morning. How did you sleep? Not the best. <laughs> yeah. For six, tried to put him back to sleep. But he slept until like seven. I mean, he, him and I got up at seven. I did good outside. 
Oh, and this Ryokan offered a Kizu Kata, so of course, we had to put it on Wolfie. <laughs> Tip 7. Ryokan Wi-Fi. So we usually don't let Wolfie watch TV, but when he goes out on trips, it seems to help settle him down with so much stuff going on. So having a Ryokan with a strong and fast Wi-Fi connection is nice. The thing is, some Ryokans don't have the best connection compared to, say, hotels in the city. So you may want to preload your iPad with the greatest hits before leaving on your trip. This time though, the internet was more than streamable. He drank, he ate all the melon. Oh really? I kept on feeding him this entire time. Tip 8. Sending stuff in advance. So when traveling with a baby or kids, you have to bring a lot of stuff just to get through one day, let alone several days. For us, Wolfie takes up one entire side of the suitcase, while Maiko and I, oh and the camera gear, share the other side. So for advanced planners, you can actually send your baggage from airport to hotel or hotel to hotel to lighten the travel load. And tip 9. Cleaning schedule. In a Japanese ryokan, bedding staff come and put away futons in the morning. They do this so that guests can use a room during the day, especially if you're staying in one room. You might want to check the cleaning time in advance so you can plan your baby schedule accordingly. In our case, Wolfie doesn't take a morning nap anymore so it doesn't affect us so much. But parents with a little one that requires a morning nap should coordinate with the hotel. <laughs> Good job! So those are my tips for now, but I didn't want to end it here without sharing some of our beach day. So we are finally headed to the beach. It is just right in front of the hotel. Super excited for this. This is Wolfie's first time and I guess our first time also taking Wolfie to the beach. I think so. It's not made for sand. I've never seen anybody. Just <laughs> he could do that. Oh, so low. Too low. It's going in the water. Here you are, yes. sir. Here's your water. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you go, sir. Your water you ordered? <laughs> oh, he has you to do it. So this is kind of interesting. He is kind of liking the water, kind of not. I think he's still a little bit, like he loves the water, but I think the waves scare him a little bit. So we got him in, he played around in the water a little bit, but I think it's still a little bit much. He does like playing in the sand, which is good. But yeah, I think we're just gonna have to go with the flow. You okay? No, no. What's happening? He beat, can you stop it? Should I just peel him off? Oh, you kick. After Wolfie's lunch nap, we decided to take a walk by the beach. And that was our summer trip to the beach. If you want to see more of what happened, check us out on our Tokyo Zebra family channel. Hopefully we'll get that video released sometime this year. All right, so we're gonna end it here. If you guys like this video, help us out and hit that like button. If you guys want to see any more videos like this or anything related to Japan, then hit that subscribe button and the bell button and we'll catch you guys in the next one.